So, how are we going to talk about this one, guys? What are you going to talk about tonight after a game like that? Um, game wrapped up over an hour ago, but I was watching the uh, Browns game and the Chargers game, and I think there was one other pretty good finish, so I wasn't able to make the video right after, but, uh, man. Seahawks win, so, you know, that's cool. We, we have had a problem winning games over the last two months worth of football we played, so that's cool, but I swear that other than running the football, which I'll get into, I don't know what we did well out there. I don't know how to praise this team because, guys, I mean, this game, and <clears throat> obviously there are some caveats, I have never seen a more perfect example of the trade-off I was talking about when it came to Pete Carroll. I was just talking about it last last week, talking about the Pete Carroll problem and the way in which we give up stuff on offense because he's so good on defense, and then he goes out and has the perfect example out there on the field. And I'll probably have to address the specifics of that in a future video a little more, but look. We are building something with our offensive line in terms of being able to run the ball. Because when I heard Chris Carson was going to be out today, I was like, what? No. I, I was like, what are we going to do now? I, I was genuinely like, okay, what the hell are we going to do in this game? But we plugged in a guy who barely made the roster, Mike Davis, a fourth string running back. Because ProSize was still not really ready to go. And we didn't totally trust Penny. And Mike Davis ran all over that <clears throat> Arizona turf. Which, by the way, fuck that turf. Oh my god. Um, <clears throat> if we never play in Arizona again, you know, that would make me really happy. But uh, obviously that's, that's not going to happen. Um, Mike Davis, player of the game. He caught some screen passes and was productive there. Um, busted some big carries. He had a 20-yarder. He had another, like, 18-yarder. So there were some explosive plays on the ground as well. We just, without our number one running back, we just plugged in guys. And we still saw production. That's what we've been waiting for. Rashad Penny had a good game, too. Rashad Penny almost had 50 yards. I was impressed with him for the most part. He busted a long run as well. So... We saw a little bit of this offensive line working to a point where the running back doesn't matter as much as the blocking does. So that was great. That made me optimistic about the future, but it doesn't matter if you're not putting up points off of that. Guys, what good is being able to run the ball for 170 yards on five yards of carry, which is great. If you're not getting points and we had to pull teeth to get to 20 with no turnovers our offense did not turn the ball over once so I can't blame that um, I mean Wilson had an efficient day Wilson was efficient and effective in limited capacity I mean he didn't have a monster game he had a good like Dak Prescott game but his game was not terrible. He had a high completion percentage. He only got sacked twice. He made some good decisions. So the players, I, I can't get mad at these players, guys, because I'm starting to see the basis of something better than what I have seen over the past couple years. The receivers, I mean, Baldwin obviously rusty in his first game back. I'm not going to hate on the guy for that. He made a couple of nice plays out there, and I'm assuming the stuff that he didn't do today, like... Uh, you know, his holding call, his uh, <clears throat> stopping one yard short of the first down marker twice. I'm assuming that stuff is going to improve as the weeks go on. But at the end of this game, for all the praise I can heap on some of these players, David Moore had his first two NFL catches and played a good game. 
um, 20 points, and it's pulling teeth to get 20. So I look at the coaches who I don't think put these players in a very good position to succeed. I mean, we would run the ball on a second and 11, but then we would pass the ball on fourth and one. I don't get that. I mean, we had success running the ball, and then on some short yardage situations, we had a big fourth and one. We had a big third and one. Both times we passed. Both times the play looked like a mess. And, you know, we, we burned two timeouts in the second half. We burned two timeouts in the second half and made sure that we didn't have any for our eventual game-winning drive. And the plays we run after those timeouts, because I think both those timeouts were on offense, they don't even look like good plays. If you're going to burn a timeout, at least come up with a kick-ass play to make it worth using that timeout. 0 for 10 on third down. That is what I'm talking about with the Pete Carroll trade-off, guys. 0 for 10 on third down against a bad Arizona team. Arizona's the only team in the league with no wins this season. They've already lost three games at home. They, I don't want to say their defense is a complete garbage fire, but it's not a great defense. So <clears throat> if you look around the league, you will see teams balling out on offense including teams that have no right to be balling out on offense. So for this offense to look this bad in a game where honestly, you know, the players are not slacking, the players are not playing bad. Marshall dropped a first down catch that ended up being a pivotal swing in this game. So maybe you throw Marshall out there, but what reason is it that we're not producing at an NFL level? Today was a joke. Like, okay, Seabass missed two field goals, including one that should have been a chip shot. Okay, how about you get in the end zone? You recover a fumble inside the 30-yard line, and you end up kicking a field goal. How about you get in the end zone? I mean, we can't blame the lack of running game. We can't blame being one-dimensional. We ran the ball great today. So you can't even say that. I don't know. I don't know. It just seems to me that even though the players play well, we're not making the right play calls in the right situations to put them in a position to succeed. We might be the only team this year that has won a game where we converted no third downs. That's that's insane. <clears throat> we should not be going par for par with an offense that is starting a rookie in his first ever NFL start and doesn't have much else other than David Johnson. I mean, their offensive line has looked bad over the past three games tonight. They looked great. And I'm not shocked by that because I don't believe in our defensive line. But our offense should not be going punch for punch with that offense in Arizona. We have had the same quarterback for seven years now. I don't know. Defense, look, they did a lot of good things out there today. Jerron Reed made a lot of plays out there. Really impressed with that guy. Nobody else on the defensive line really did anything. So you get what you get in this game where on a vast majority of these plays, Josh Rosen is just sitting back there in the pocket with all day. <clears throat> I don't really want to put too much of this on the defense because I think that they gave up about as little as they could. Um, the lack of interceptions, the only the, having the one turnover is obviously frustrating. We gave up some big plays, and we gave up a few more big plays that just didn't happen because, um, you know, Arizona receivers, I think Christian Kirk dropped an easy touchdown. J.J. Nelson dropped an easy touchdown. So, I don't know. I mean, the defensive line is bad. <clears throat> And given the fact that our defensive line has so many problems on it, what we saw tonight was probably about as good as we can get. But at the end of the day, you saw them give up a game-tying touchdown drive and what should have been a game-losing field goal drive. 
And then Phil Dawson just decided, you know, I'm going to go, you know, miss for miss with the sea bass. And we end up squeaking out of there with a win where it still doesn't really look good because <clears throat> the way we drove down for that field goal was kind of embarrassing. We didn't know what we were doing. We were setting, settling for a 52-yard field goal in a situation where we could have driven down and had a 40-yard field goal. We could have driven down and gotten, an, you know, a 45-yard field goal even. And then we're like, okay, we expect Seabass to make this. But the way we played, it's tough to even say that. It's a 52-yarder. <clears throat> You're leaving things up to chance. And this is a team with a quarterback that has been there for seven years. I know it's a new offensive coordinator. I know some of the pieces are different, but we should not look worse on offense than Arizona did. And for a lot of this game, we did. We didn't look any better. Look, in my head, if we were going to be bad this year, which I knew was a possibility, and honestly, based on the way these first four games have gone, we don't look terrible, but we don't really even look average. So we look closer to bad than we look closer to good. I thought we were going to be like the 2010 Colts, where they had a quarterback, they had a couple of decent receivers, a couple of decent offensive linemen, a couple of good pass rushers, a good linebacker, a good safety, and everyone else was hot garbage. That 2010 Colts team was trash. They should have won two games that year. And because Peyton Manning was so freaking good with his head basically falling off of his neck, they went 10-6 and six and won a, the division. And I thought we were going to look like that this year, and Wilson was not going to be as good as Peyton, so I thought, well, maybe we go 8-8 eight and eight when we really have a 2-14 and 14 roster. We're not seeing that. Russell Wilson is not dragging this team to their victories. Russell Wilson is getting dragged by his defense to these victories. And up props to the defense, but it is really troubling that the offense looks this bad. And that's just the on-the-field stuff. We have two season-ending injuries coming out of this game. One probably career-ending as far as his Seahawks career goes. Will Disley, first catch of the game, makes a little five-yard catch out for the year. I have no idea how he got hurt that bad on a play like that, but uh, big blow for a team that was depending on Will Disley, not just for catching the ball, but for his blocking. And now we replace him with a guy like Nick Vanette, who I don't see that much out of. I just haven't seen it yet. And guys, this hurts. This hurts for what the product we will see on the field going forward. This hurts for the future of the franchise. This hurts for um, what we remember from this franchise <clears throat> in terms of their great success over the past six years. It hurts. Oh, touchdown Ravens. Wow, that was quick. See, I mean, you know, a team with freaking Joe Flacco and a bunch of guys I barely even know at wide receiver is moving the ball with regularity. I mean, I see all these teams have success on offense, and I'm like, what's wrong with our offense, you know? But but I digress. Earl Thomas looks like his career in Seattle is over. His career might be over. His season in the tank, he's out, broke his leg again, related to what happened to him, you know, a couple years ago against Carolina. He's clearly very pissed off at the team. This was his worst case scenario. This is what he was terrified of when he was demanding a new contract. There's no villains here. I mean, I, I have some other NFL fan friends who are saying, oh, the Seahawks are such douchebags. Look what they did to this guy. There's no villain here. We played hardball. He was playing hardball. He gave in. He decided to show up. Look, we don't owe him a contract extension or a trade. We had him under contract for this year. If we expect him to play for us while he's under contract for us, then that's not, that's not unfair of us. But... Um, to see him so brazenly pissed off at this organization for what we did to him, how we did him dirty. It's tough, man, because, you know, whatever chance we had of keeping him past this year feels like it's gone. Franchise tagging him coming off a devastating injury like this is, seems like a horrible idea. Extending him for a monster contract extension seems like an even worse idea. 
letting him go and go to another team and do whatever the hell he wants to do. I mean, it doesn't feel great, but that is clearly the best thing we can do now. Um, you know, as Seahawks fans, we can go, well, that's why we didn't extend him. Look where we would have been if we had extended him. But it hurts to see him publicly flip off the team on his way on the cart out the door because he didn't get his money. And now he might never get his money. He, you know, who knows how he comes back? Who knows what anybody will be willing to give him? I don't want to go this long for a postgame video, but uh, there's just too much to talk about, guys. Off the field, on the field, the team, they're not executing at the level that I should expect. And I wonder about these players going forward because the players were siding with Earl. The players loved Earl. The players wanted him to get his money. The players supported his holdout. It's not like Le'Veon Bell. The Steelers, most of their players hate Le'Veon Bell right now, so they don't care what happens with him. But these players loved Earl. Are they going to tune out the coaching staff and the team from here on out? I have no idea. Look, I stand by the way that this team handled the Earl situation for the most part because there were concerns, there were red flags, and if you look at where we are right now, if we had just given Earl like a $50 million contract, we would be feeling really shitty about that. But this hurts, guys. And this is why he held out. This is why you have to be willing to understand why he wanted his money so bad. I mean, Cam is going to be sitting on the couch this year and next year making money, which he deserved because he gave his career playing for us. And now Earl's not going to get that for us ever. As bad of a win as you can have. I mean, last year in Arizona, we won. It was bad. This feels worse because I don't even think we played well. All right. I'm going to have a Tuesday night video with a lot to talk about with regard to, you know, specifically this offense. But is the Pete Carroll trade-off worth it? Because what I'm looking at right now, I don't see a lot of hope for this offense to ever be an explosive, dynamic offense. I don't. Because I think in Pete Carroll's mind, the offense was not that bad today. I think he was fine with most of the stuff he saw. I really believe that. And that's a problem. Okay, I'm out of here. Go Hawks. Two and two, but nothing feels good right now. Except getting one in the win column. And seeing Seabass play his way back onto the team with hitting those last two field goals. So, salute Seabass. You staved off Armageddon for one more week. Peace.